Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the CBC Kids Sunday service for April 5th, 2020. My name is Mark, or if you prefer, you can call me Mark Gogo, and I thank you to Minister Ruby for allowing me to be a guest teacher for today's lesson. Today is a very special Sunday because it's Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem for the very last time before he was crucified on the cross. And that means that next Sunday, it's already Easter. And I'm so surprised at how quickly Easter has come upon us. Each day just moves so quickly. But I'm really happy to be here to celebrate this special Sunday with you all. So why don't we start off with a word of prayer. And please, if you have your family members handy, or your siblings maybe, invite them in to pray with you before we start our lesson. Let's do that right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being so good so loving and so kind to us. I know things are a little weird right now because we're all watching these messages from our homes because we can't gather together. So many of us are fearful or scared or uncertain about the future. And Lord, we thank you that time and time again, you give us peace during times like these. Peace knowing that you're with us and that you love us and that you care for us. You're a God who does all those things so faithfully, and we thank you for that. Lord, I want to pray for all the kids that are listening to this message today and how thankful we are for each of them. May you continue to care for them as your own children, and may you continue to build them up in their walk with you so that someday they would be able to lead this church as the next generation. So may you bless this lesson, God, and we thank you that you're a God with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for praying with me. I know you guys like to do a lot of memory verses, and we have yet another one for this morning, and I know a lot of you probably already know this one, which is wonderful. But why don't we read this one together, and my assignment to you this week is to memorize it, so that in moments where you feel sad, scared, or discouraged, you have a verse memorized where God can really speak to you and comfort you in those scary times. So let's read this verse together. It comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. And it reads this. Jesus answered. Remember, all together now. Jesus answered. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Why don't we do that one more time? John, chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What a beautiful verse. I love having that one in my little bank of memorized verses for those tough moments. Now we're going to dedicate a short amount of time to a worship song. I provided a link in the description below so that you can listen to the song together. And the song for this morning is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Because it talks about the joy that we feel in knowing God and that God has saved us because he gave Jesus his one and only son. So why don't you pause this video and I'll give you a moment to listen to this song in worship. Hello and welcome back. I hope you enjoy that time of worship and praise. We're going to move on to the lesson today. And today's theme is Jesus came to bring peace. And like I said earlier, Palm Sunday is special because this describes the day where Jesus walked into Jerusalem. Or actually, we'll see, he didn't walk. It's a spoiler. He did not walk into Jerusalem, but he actually rode into Jerusalem, as we will see. And this is a very special Sunday because that's an act that allows us to now know him And through knowing him, experience Jesus's peace. So let's talk about the word peace for a second. What is peace? A lot of us have heard that word before, but do we really know what it means in light of who Jesus is? You know, what does God think about peace? Well, some of you might be thinking, oh, peace is something that has to do with war. When two countries are battling each other or two nations are in a skirmish as we know has happened countless times throughout history. And how I like to describe it is actually a tug of war, which is a game that we're all familiar with. There's one person on each side 
pulling on the rope, hoping to topple over the other one. Really, really fun game. But that's essentially what a war is. There's two opposing sides that are trying to beat the other one out in this pulling match. And how peace speaks into that situation is peace means that they drop the rope and they become friends. They make up with one another and they decide we're not going to pull this rope anymore. We're not going to fight each other anymore. We're just going to be at peace. So maybe some of you thought of peace like this. Another thing that you might have thought of is the peace of nature. So many of us love the great outdoors, including myself. Have you ever been on a camping trip or a hike with your family and just seen and admired the beautifulness of nature, the beauty of nature, the ocean, the lakes, the wildlife, the trees. Doesn't that make you feel so peaceful on the inside when there's just quiet? It's so, so nice. So maybe some of you thought of that. Or lastly, maybe some of you thought of an inner peace that you're comfortable with who you are. You know how to be relaxed. You're at ease with the world around you. Maybe that's what peace is to you. So think about these three different views on what peace might be because they're different for every single person. Now, today's text is going to be in Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. And some Bibles describe this scene as a triumphal entry. And a triumph is essentially a victory where you just have won or you've overcome a great obstacle. It can also be a celebration of that victory. And that's exactly what goes on here as Jesus enters Jerusalem. This is a triumph. There's a victory and a celebration for that event. If you have your Bibles, please turn there with me, and why don't we read these verses together? Let's start. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. And what a colt is, is a young horse or a young donkey. So the donkey's child. Let's move on. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. Starting in verse four now. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So I mentioned earlier, Jesus just didn't walk into Jerusalem. He actually rode in on a donkey. Very interesting. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Now we're going to take a brief break. We're going to take a brief break right here because I want to describe to you why is today called Palm Sunday. And it actually says right here why this is the case. You see, in the passage, a lot of the onlookers, as they saw Jesus riding into Jerusalem on this small donkey, not a horse, but a donkey, a very gentle and humble, almost lowly animal, they cut branches from the palm trees around them and started waving them. And we'll see in a little bit, they actually chant out something very specific to Jesus as they watch him ride in. So that's why it's called Palm Sunday traditionally at least, because in this passage we see those palm branches being waved towards Jesus in a celebratory manner to celebrate his entry into Jerusalem as he rode in. And this is a picture of actually what palm trees look like in real life. And if you're really observant, you probably notice that there is a palm tree on the corner of this slide, and that's why it's on there. But today is Palm Sunday the day where Jesus entered Jerusalem and the onlookers cut palm leaves from the trees around them and started waving them. And they're really, really big, as you can see in this photo. So not the easiest thing to hold, but very, very majestic and very, very symbolic. 
in this celebration. So that's why it's called Palm Sunday. Kind of fun, right? Because of the palm leaves. Let's finish off our passage starting in verse 9. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You might be asking, what does Hosanna mean? Hosanna means save us or save us now. They're asking Jesus to save them as the Messiah. Beautiful, isn't it? And finally, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who who is this? Who is this person? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And that brings us to the end of today's passage that chronicles Jesus' entry into the city of Jerusalem. And here's an artist's depiction, a painting of what that might have looked like for the onlookers. If we were watching Jesus ride in on his donkey, as you can see, the donkey's not a very big animal compared to a horse or something larger. It's actually quite small, and Jesus is almost as big as the donkey. And something I want to point out to you is that in this picture, the audience members are waving their palm branches, just like we saw earlier, because it's Palm Sunday. That's why we call it that. And also you can see, as was described in our passage this morning, that people are grabbing their cloaks and laying down the cloaks onto the ground so that Jesus and his donkey had a path to ride into the city with. So very interesting picture. It might not have looked exactly like this, but this is probably pretty close to what they saw. And the cool thing is that this just isn't, it's not just a fantasy story or, you know, a fictional story. This actually happened because Jerusalem is still there today. And here's a photo of the southern steps that go into the city of Jerusalem. The very same steps that Jesus himself rode in on with his donkey. Isn't that incredible that it's still there today? You can actually go to Jerusalem and see them. Here's another photo for you guys to look at. Very, very cool. This is actually where the entrance used to be uh, that Jesus rode through to go into Jerusalem. And that's also still there. But ever since then, you know, many, many years have passed and that doorway has been shut off. But still incredible that this still stands there today if you visit. Cool, right? Okay, you know what time it is. It's time for that lesson trivia a chance for you to test yourself and see if you've been listening well and been learning the information from the passage well. So why don't we get started with some true or false questions. I have five of them for you today. So let's see if you were paying attention, all right? Let's start with the first one. True or false, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a majestic horse. Let's see if you guys got it right. The answer is false. He did not ride in on a majestic horse. Remember, he rode in on a donkey with a colt, a very different animal than a horse. It's kind of a trick question there. They're both animals that people rode back then in the Bible, but he rode in on a donkey, not a great big horse. Let's go to question number two, true or false? The disciples bought the donkey that Jesus was riding from a local merchant. What do you guys think? The answer is false. Remember, Jesus actually instructed them to go to a certain place where they would see this donkey in its cold. And they were actually handed over to the disciples to bring to Jesus. So they did not purchase the animal, but instead it was given to them. So... That's another false one, two in a row. Some of you might be two for two right now. Let's see if you can get all five correct. Let's move on to number three. True or false? A prophet long ago said that the king would come riding on a donkey. What do you think? Did you get it right? The answer is true. This was something that a prophet in the Old Testament foresaw that Jesus would ride in, Jesus being the king that he's talking about. And the prophet's name is Zechariah, by the way. 
He said that the king would come riding in on a donkey, a gentle animal. Ready for number four? Here's the next one. True or false? Crowds spread out a huge red carpet for Jesus to ride in on. Did you get it? You ready for the answer? The answer is false. Jesus did not ride in on a red carpet beneath him. Remember, they put their cloaks onto the ground for him to ride in on. So he wasn't welcomed maybe in the way that we see some celebrities or famous actors come in during their movie premieres on this great big bright red carpet. No, it was simply the cloaks and the garments that the people were wearing laid down on the ground for him and his donkey to ride into Jerusalem on. Very, very different. Very, very humble. All right. I know a lot of you have answered all four correctly so far. Let's see if you can get the last one right. And if you haven't gotten them all right so far, that's okay because the last one counts for all the, all the other questions. So if you get the last one right, you get all of them right. All right, let's go for it. The last one says this, true or false? The crowd shouted things like, Hosanna and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What do you think, true or false? Let's see if you get it right. The right answer is true. This is what the Bible passage said to us, right? It says very clearly that the crowd shouted these things like Hosanna and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is exactly what is written. So good job you all on the true and false lesson trivia. I hope you guys found that helpful and that you can remember these facts about Matthew chapter 21. So how does br Jesus bring us peace? Let's focus back in on the, on the theme. Remember we talked about peace? How does Jesus bring it to us? Well, he brings it to us in three very, very powerful ways. The first one is that he brings us peace with others. And here's an image of what it looks like to be at peace with others. Kind of like that tug of war. We drop the rope, we hold hands, and we care for one another. Jesus can do that for us. A second way that he brings us peace is peace with ourselves. We have internal peace with who God made us to be, with the world around us, with the things that might stress us out or make us scared or sad. We're at peace with those things because we know we can trust God through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's a wonderful thing. And the last and most important way that Jesus brings us peace is actually by bringing us peace with God. As many of you may know, Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. And by Jesus sacrificing himself on the cross, we now have peace with God. He's no longer angry at us for disobeying him in our sin, but because we have Christ's sacrifice, we have forgiveness. God forgives us for our wrongdoing and he welcomes us into his family. We now have peace with with God. And that is the most important one that Jesus brings to us as he enters Jerusalem to be crucified on the cross. A question for you to think about and maybe share your answer with a parent or a sibling. Can you name one way that knowing Jesus gives you peace? Just one. One way that Jesus gives you peace. If I were to answer this question, something I love doing is praying to God when I'm scared about something. When I'm scared about something my parents have said to me or something I've said to my parents or upsetting my friends or disappointing others, including myself. I love praying to God and asking for him to make me feel more peace, knowing that God has taken care of me and that he's going to take care of all these things because he loves me and he's in control. So think about that one thing that Jesus gives you peace in, in your life. Let's finish up right here, all right? What's the big picture with our lesson today? Remember, our theme is Jesus brings us peace. So what happened in this passage is Jesus went into Jerusalem to ultimately die on the cross so that we can have peace and our sins can be forgiven. And we're actually going to talk more about this next week on Easter Sunday. So stay tuned for that. And what you can do to apply this lesson, to live out this lesson as obedient Christians, is to pray for Jesus' peace to come into all areas of your life. Not just certain ones, but everything. 
Let everything be peaceful. And lastly, something we can do together as our church, CBCCOC, as CBC kids, we can all gather together at 9 p.m. every single day in our own homes to pray together. Pray for our church. Pray for your family and your loved ones. Pray for the world that's in crisis right now. Do that every single day. We'll all be doing it with you. I'll be doing it with you. So definitely go ahead and do that when you get a chance, even tonight. Why don't we close in a word of prayer? Thank you so much for listening to this lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something about Jesus' life through Matthew chapter 21. Let's close in prayer and then we'll hear from you uh, next week. So thank you so much for watching. Let's pray. Dear God, even though life is hard and life is difficult sometimes, and there's so many things we can be scared about or saddened by, Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the peace that Jesus gives us. We love him so much because he loves us so much. So may we give Jesus all of our problems, all of the things that make us feel frustrated so that we can experience the peace that he gives us. Thank you for your son, Jesus. We love him so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you and have a wonderful Sunday. See you next time.